Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hi, dear doctors and colleagues. My name is Usama, and in this seminar, we will talk about Wilms tumor. This seminar is done by Usama Alaeddin, Ayman Majid, Abu Bakr Abdul Sattar, and Muhammad Ismail. Wilms tumor, or also called nephroblastoma, it is a type of a blue cell tumor. And is the most common primary tumor of kidney in children. It affects the ages between two and five years old, and the tumor often occurs in one kidney. What are the causes? The causes are genetic in origin. Three groups of congenital malformation are associated with increased risk of development of nephroblastoma. Number one, Wagner syndrome, which is a genetic syndrome, affects children, have risk of development of Wilms tumor of 33%. It also characteristics with aniridia, genitourinary anomalies, and mental retardation. The second syndrome is Dean's Darch syndrome, which is a congenital nephropathy and have risk of development of Wilms tumor of 90%. The last congenital malformation is packed with Widman syndrome, which is characteristic by organomegaly, mainly spleen and liver, and also hemihypertrophy of the body. Both Wagner syndrome and <clears throat> Dean's Drash syndrome are associated with abnormalities of Wilms tumor 1 gene or WT1 gene on, a, on short arm of a chromosome 11. WT1 gene is critical for normal renal and gonadal development. Wagner syndrome is due to deletion in WT1 gene while the Dean's Dry syndrome is due to dominant negative mutation of WT1 gene. The pack with Widman syndrome genetic impairment is explained in the next slide. This syndrome is concerned with WT2 gene, which is distal to WT1 gene at short arm of a chromosome 11. To understand the genetic defect, we need to know the normal expression of WT2 gene. WT2 gene has two alleles, one from the father and one from the mother, and both alleles encode IGF2 or insulin like growth factor 2. These are the paternal allele and maternal allele. The paternal allele is the is expressed and produces patrinal IGF2, while the matrinal allele is imprinted. So the matrinal allele doesn't activate it to produce IGF2. Now we will start to explain the genetic defect in back with, with Weidman syndrome. So the patrinal allele is expressed to give IGF2, while the defect in the maternal allele, the maternal allele now is not imprinted, so it will be expressed to produce maternal IGF2. The combination of paternal IGF2 and maternal IGF2 will lead to overexpression of IGF2 in the body, which lead to both organ enlargement, mainly in the liver and spleen and tumor genesis as Wilms tumor and other type of tumors. Thank you for listening and my friend Ayman will start with you with pathological features. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Ayman Majid. I will talk about the epidemiology and morphology of Wilms tumor. I will start from the epidemiology. Wilms tumor is the most common malignant renal tumor of childhood. The mean age at diagnosis 
is 3 to 3.5 years and no sex predilection is apparent. The prevalence of the tumor is related to three congenital malformations which are Wagar syndrome, Denise Drush syndrome, Beck with Wedman syndrome. The prevalence of Wagar syndrome ranges from 1 in half to 1 million individuals. It is estimated that one third of people with any radia actually have Wagar syndrome. Approximately 7 in 1000 cases of Wilms tumor can be attributed to Wagar syndrome. The prevalence of Denise Drush syndrome is unknown. At least 150 affected individuals have been reported in the scientific literature. Big with Wedman syndrome affects 1 in 10,500 to 13,700 newborns worldwide. The condition may actually be more common than this estimated because some people with mild symptoms are never diagnosed. Now I will continue with the morphology of Wilms tumor. Crossly, Wilms tumor tends to present as a large solitary well circumscribed mass. Although 10% are either bilateral or multicentric at the time of diagnosis. On cut section, the tumor is soft, homogeneous, and tan to gray, with occasional foci of hemorrhage, cystic degeneration, and necrosis. Microscopically, Wilms tumors are characterized by different stages of nephrogenesis, the classical triphasic combination of blastimal, stromal, and epithelial cell types is observed in most lesions although the percentage of each component is variable. The epithelial differentiation usually takes the form of abortive tubules or glomeruli while sheets of small blue cell with few distinctive features characterize the blastimal component. Stromal cell are usually fibrocytic or myxoid in nature. Rarely other heterologous elements are identified including squamous or mucinous epithelium, smooth muscle, adipose tissue, cartilage, osteoid and neurogenic tissue. There are two important structures in the morphology of Worms tumor. The first is anaplasia. Approximately 5% contain foci of anaplasia. Cells with large hyperchromatic pleomorphic nuclei and abnormal mitosis. The presence of anaplasia correlates with the underlying P53 mutations and the emergency of resistance to chemotherapy. The pattern of distribution of anaplastic cells within the primary tumor, focal versus diffuse, has important implications for prognosis. The other important structures are nephrogenic crests. Nephrogenic crests are putative precursor lesions of worms tumors and are sometimes 
present in the renal parenchyma adjacent to the tumor. Nephrogenic crestes have a spectrum of histological appearance from hyperplastic crestes that resemble worms tumors to sclerotic crestes consisting predominantly of fibrous tissue with occasional admixed immature tubules or glomeruli. It is important to document the presence of nephrogenic crestes in the resected specimen since these patients are at an increased risk of developing worms tumors in the contralateral kidney. Thank you for listening and my colleague Abu Bakr will continue. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Hello dears and doctors. My name is Abu Bakr Abdul Sattar. In this seminar about worms tumor, I will explain the clinical manifestation, the clinical course, and the stages of worms tumor. So firstly, I will begin with clinical manifestation. Most children with Wilms tumor present with an abdominal mass that is discovered by their parents. Many children do not have complaints at the time that the mass is first noted. About associated symptoms may include first abdominal pain, second fever, third hypertension, fourth hematuria. As we said, Wilms tumor most common renal malignancy in children under 15 years old and associated with Wagner syndrome, dennis Rush syndrome, pag with Woodman syndrome. Here and here we see abdominal mass or swelling, which look like to become firm, non-tender mass, eccentrically located and rarely crosses the midline. About the diagnosis, we used ultrasound, CT scan, MRI, and surgical excision or biopsy. Now I will explain the stages of Wilms tumor. The first stage, a tumor limited to the kidney and completely excised. في هذه المرحلة الورم راح يكون محدود في منطقة الكلية ونقدر نستأصله بشكل كامل بدون ظهور أي بقايا للتيومر. The second stage, a tumor that extends beyond the kidney but is completely excised. No residual tumor is apparent at or beyond the margins of excision. في هذه المرحلة الورم راح ينتد شوية خارج الكلية لكن نقدر نستأصله بشكل كامل بدون ظهور أي بقايا للتيومر at or beyond the margins of excision. The third stage residual tumor confined to the abdomen, lymph node in the renal helix, the periaortic chains or beyond contained tumor. The tumor extends beyond the surgical margins either microscopically or grossly. في هذه المرحلة الورم راح ينتشر بشكل محدود في منطقة الأبدومين كذلك في منطقة اللينف نود كذلك في منطقة البري أيورتيك تشينز كذلك الورم راح يمتد beyond the surgical margins either microscopically or grossly The fourth stage hematogenous metastasis which means the tumor spread through the bloodstream هذا يعني أنه الورم راح ينتشر عن طريق الدم The fifth stage bilateral renal involvement which mean both kidney are affected. The clinical course. The prognosis of Wilms tumor is generally very good and excellent results are obtained with a combination of nephrectomy and chemotherapy. Anaplasia is a harbinger of adverse prognosis, but careful analyses have shown that as long as the anaplasia is focal and confined with the restricted nephrectomy specimen. In contrast, Wilms tumor with diffuse anaplasia, especially those with extra renal spread, have the least favorable outcome. The summary. Wilms tumor is the most common renal neoplasm of childhood. Patients with three syndromes are at an increased risk for Wilms tumor. The syndromes are Wagner syndrome, Dennis Drash syndrome, and Pag with Woodman syndrome. The morphology components of Wilms tumor include blastema, which become small, round blue cells, and epithelial and citromal elements. إلى هنا انتهى السيمينار. أتمنى قدرنا نوضح فكرة بسيطة عن الموضوع. 
Thank you very much and thanks for listening.